In this video, we're going to take the point and click style demo scene in the Ultimate Crafting System and convert it into one that can be used in a first person scene. In this case, we'll be using the first person demo package provided by Unity, which uses Unity's new input. And as you can see, it does indeed interact as you would expect in a first person thing. And we will hook it up to some keybinds as well. So first things first, we need to know how the demo scene is actually working in the first place or how we interact with objects. In this case, it's a three step process. The first step is the camera sends a click message to the interactive object. The interactive object gets that click and decides to send a interact request to the player. The player receives that interact request and then it sends an interact event to the interactable object. This is how it works in the demo scene anyways, and we're going to be creating something similar for the first person scene. Before anything else, you want to add a poly crafting world to the scene. So let's go ahead and look for that prefab and just drag it into the hierarchy here. You'll need this in any scene that uses the ultimate crafting system. Now that that's in place, let's make it so you can move around items and have access to a hotbar, for example. To do that, there is a player item UI that we can drag in. And let's just drag and drop that onto the player capsule and go ahead and hit play. And you'll see there is an error in the bottom here. You're trying to read input using the Unity Engine.input class. And this is because this demo that Unity has provided for us uses Unity's new input system, not the old input system. In order to fix that, hop over to your project settings, go over to player, scroll down to active input handling and change it from input system package new to both. This will allow it to use both Unity's new system as well as the old system. After doing this, you will need to restart Unity though, so go ahead and do so. Of course, save your scene beforehand. And once Unity has opened back up again, if you enter play mode, you will see that we no longer have that error. And if we make it so that the mouse is not locked by the player thing here, you'll see that we can drag and drop items around and stick them in our inventory and such. Uh, we don't want this inventory to be up all the time though, so let's go ahead and disable that real quick. And now if we hit play, we can click that to open up the inventory and click X to exit it out. So now that we are at least able to move items around and such, let's see what happens if we stick in a crafting station. Let's try adding in that 3D printer. The crafting station 3D printer prefab is what we want. Place it in the scene and rotate it around. Okie doke. And hitting play, you'll notice we get an error. There is no attached commandable player. The commandable player is the script in the original scene that controls where the player moves and such. There's a player commander attached to the crafting station that sends a message to the commandable player, which then sends it back to the crafting station itself. So those are the scripts that we need to create new versions of. So to go ahead and change it over to a new set of scripts, let's open up the crafting station prefab and go all the way to the interactive object prefab. And you'll see right here we have this player commander script and this pointer click event that hooks into it. This is what we're going to be swapping out for our own custom script. So let's go ahead and remove that and add a new component. We'll call this first person player commander and hit create and add. Then go ahead and double click on it to open it up in your text editor of choice. And we're not going to need any of the existing code, at least for now. So go ahead and delete it. And we have two methods that we want to be able to use. One of them tells a player to interact and one of them tells the player to stop interacting. We're going to say public void tell player to interact. And then it needs to know what to interact with. In this case, we have this base interactable script that is on the interactive object. And that's what it needs a reference to. 
So we'll add in that base interactable. Now this base interactable needs a reference to the polyperfect.crafting.integration.demo namespace. Uh, you just need to type that in word for word there, or if you're using Rider, it'll automatically import it for you. And then this needs to do two things. First is get the player, and second is tell the player to interact. And the other method that we will create is the one to stop interacting. So public void tell player to stop interacting. This one doesn't need a reference to the interactable, so we don't need to specify that. And similarly, we will get the player and tell the player to stop interacting. And if we hit save and hop back into Unity, we can now drag this in here and say player commander, tell player to interact. And it looks like it automatically had a reference to the base interactable thing here. If it didn't, you could just drag and drop the base interactable right there and it would link it up perfectly. Now that's only half of what we need to do. We also need to tell it to stop interacting when, for example, the close button is pressed. So if we save this prefab here and hop over to the crafting station, there is a close button here that is using the existing player commander that we previously deleted on the other thing. So let's remove it here as well and just tell it to look at the crafting station's player commander and tell player to stop interacting. So now we have rigged up at least both the start interacting command and the stop interacting command. Go ahead and save that. Now we need to actually add a script to the player that knows what to do with those. So let's hop over to the player capsule and add a new component. We'll call this first person player. Create an add. And again, double click it to open it up. And this will have two methods on it, like the commander itself. Public void start interacting. And this will take that base interactable just as the previous one. And a public void stop interacting. If we go back to the previous script, the player commander at least, we can now implement these. So the first is to get the player. The easiest way to do that is using the find object method. So we'll use find objects of type and specify first person player. Now it's not enough to just find it, we need to store it in a variable. So we'll save our player equals find object of type player. And then on that player, start interacting and pass in the interactable that we have. And that should be enough. Similarly, let's do the same thing for the stop. Since it's pretty similar, we can copy and paste. But instead of start interacting, we stop interacting. That is all that we need to do for the player commander. Now we just need to implement it on the player itself. So to tell the base interactable script to start interacting, all we need to do is say interactable dot begin interact and give it this game object. Similarly to stop interacting, we would tell the interactable to stop interact or end interact, but we need a reference to the currently interacted object. So we need to store it when it's used up here. To store it, we'll create a field, a base interactable field, call it currently interacting with, and up here just say currently interacting with equals this interactable here. Then down here, the thing that we're currently interacting with, and interaction with this game object. And that should work pretty well by itself, but we also need to handle the case that we start interacting with something else while we're already interacting with something. So we'll say if we are currently interacting with something, stop interacting with it, then do the thing. So to summarize, 
the camera sends a click event to the interactable. The click event then tells the player commander to send a try interact event to the player. The player then tells the base interactable thing to start its interaction. Popping back into Unity, if we hit play, you'll notice nothing happens on hovering over the object. And similarly, clicking it does nothing. That is because in this scene right now, there is no physics raycaster. So by default, all the canvases in the screen have a UI raycaster on them, but we need something that will actually shoot rays into the scene. To do that, hop over to the main camera and just add a physics raycaster. And that should be good. Now if we hit play and hover over the object, we see 3D printer. And if we click, we get it to pop up in the screen. Perfect. Similarly, if we click on one of the recipes and hit print, there we go, it pops up in our inventory and we can do whatever we want with it. However, there are still a few issues. In particular right now, we no longer have camera control. I think the ideal way of handling this is you move the camera with your mouse, then when you start interacting with an object, it unlocks the mouse. And then when you close whatever you're interacting with, it then goes back to being able to control the camera again. So let's take care of that now. Essentially, all that we need is something to toggle this cursor locked and cursor input for look things on this starter assets inputs script that Unity has provided us with. And we want to access those on beginning to interact with something and on ending interaction with something. So let's first open up the first person player script again and add in some Unity events. Unity events are like what you see on Unity buttons where you can just set something and tell it to do pretty much anything you want. So we'll add in two Unity events. One is going to be on begin interact and the other is on end interact. We'll invoke on begin interact right here and on end interact right here. Save and hop back into Unity. And so now we have the ability to make stuff happen when beginning and ending interaction. In this case, we want to access the starter assets inputs. Up over here, starter assets inputs. And it doesn't look like Unity has given us a way of setting these from script, but that's not a huge issue. We can go ahead and create that ourselves real quick. So we can click on the script there to open it in the project view. Double click to open it here. All right, so here's the variables that we're after, cursor locked and cursor input for look. Let's add a method that will let us set them at once. So public void set cursor lock and take in a true or false Boolean value. Set cursor locked to value and set cursor input for look to value. And that's probably enough, but let's check the usages of them real quick. So it looks like cursor locked is used here and it uses set cursor state. So we need to use set cursor state as well. So we'll make that one quick edit here. Set cursor state to cursor locked. That should be all we need to do. We can now access that from Unity events on the player capsule here. Starter asset inputs, set cursor lock, on begin interact, set it to false, and on end interact, set it to true. So now if we hop into play mode, on 3D printer, and then stop it, now we can look around, but pointing at the object doesn't seem to work. And that's actually because Unity's input system by default just ignores all mouse events when the cursor is locked. Of course, if you're making something with like VR or such, this probably isn't gonna be an issue for you. However, if we hop over to the UI event system here, see they have this input system UI input module thing here. Uh, that is what we would want to replace if we wanted to make it so that it works with a hidden cursor. And wouldn't you know it, there is a script that is included with the ultimate crafting system called standalone input module, but it works with locked cursor. How convenient. 
So just by adding that on and disabling the existing one, we should be able to now have it working. And sure enough, we can now look at 3D printer and open it up as you would expect. Of course, if you were working in VR, instead of replacing it with the but it works with hidden cursor script, you would replace it with your VR input module. Now with that, we have it working pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and enable cursor locked and look by default. So when we edit play mode, it automatically locks the cursor, lets us look around and open stuff. So that is mostly working, but there is one more thing I want to add, and that is the ability to open up the inventory. Right now, there isn't a way to open the inventory because the cursor is locked and you can't click on those three periods down there to open up the inventory. So let's go ahead and do something similar to the last video where we have a key press open up the inventory. So let's hop over to the player script again and add a new thing in the update loop here. And this is just going to say if input dot get key down key code dot e same as last time. Though previously we simply activated or deactivated a game object. This time, in order to make it work better in conjunction with the other interactables, let's use the interactable script. So we're going to get an interactable and say to start interaction on it. To that end, let's add a base interactable field here, and we'll call this inventory interactable. And then if we are currently interacting with something, then stop interacting. Otherwise, start interacting with our inventory interactable. Now that's enough on the code side, although we do need to make it so that the interactable script is on the player's inventory. So take care of that real quick. Let's hop over to the interact internal inventory, excuse me, here, and add a base interactable script to it. On beginning to interact and on end interact, we'll both need to set the object to enabled and disabled or rather active and inactive. So on begin interact, set it to active. On end interact, set it to inactive. That looks pretty good. We do need to set a reference to that here though on the first person player. So drag and drop internal inventory into the inventory interactable field. Now hitting play, you hit E, the inventory opens up. However, hitting it again does not open it again. And the reason for that is, ah, it looks like we forgot to set the currently interacting with variable to nothing after stopping interaction. So currently interacting with equals null. With that, we should have it working perfectly. Okie doke, in play mode, E opens it up and closes it. And we can open it up, then click on the 3D printer, hit E and that closes it, then opens up the inventory. Perfect. So with that, we now have a nicely functioning first person crafting game where we can craft our items, look around, open up the inventory, stick stuff in the inventory. And we are well on our way to making a decent first person crafting game. That'll be it for this video though. If you'd like to see other videos, go ahead and check out the links in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below. Until next time.